Oh, good morning. Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, and Wednesday morning, we're looking forward to a beautiful day. Uh, all days are beautiful, but some are better than others. And, and uh, today, sunny in, in, in the 70s, hallelujah for that. Um, we're looking at uh, our second reading uh, for this week, First Peter uh, chapter 1. 17 through 23. So if you can find your Bibles for that, that would be great. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm, I've learned as, as I go about doing uh, devotions and stuff is to uh, beware of short passages. And this is uh, only um, six verses long. And it's like, oh, okay, this should be easy. And it's like, oh my goodness. This has uh, so many things to it. So um, uh, right off the bat, and I'll, I'll read it in a second, but right off the bat, we need to be, as we read scripture, we need to be aware of some, some words that, you know, for me, jump out off the page. And as you read it, you'll, you'll become familiar with these words. And um, one of the key words is like, therefore, um, Therefore, is, is sort of like, okay, it looks at things previously, and now we're going to start the discussion here. And, and those things are the, are, are the things that were discussed previously are the foundation for that. So when you see that word, therefore, you know, especially if you're just starting a reading, you need to absolutely go back and check, you know, what therefore is, what the previous stuff. Um, uh, I see. I love the word yet. Uh, if you're doing the psalm uh, devotions with us, uh, you see a lot of word. You know the word yet many many times in the, in the psalms. It's like, okay, you know this is this happening, this happening, and it's usually bad stuff. It's usually like, oh, we're getting clobbered, we're getting beaten up, we're getting this, and and you know wickedness is all around. Yet. And I love that. It's, just, it's like, despite everything that is happening before, this is what's going to happen now. This is the truth that's now. And it's usually uh, the yet in, in the Psalms, especially, is uh, talks about yet I'm going to continue to praise you. I'm going to continue to love you and pray to you, uh, talking in terms of God. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, another uh, uh, word that jumps off is but. You see the word but. Um, and uh, to me, that when I see that word, I underline it. It's like, okay, here it comes. Here's, here's the setup. Here's the setup for it. And now here's the main part of the, 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 the passage that I need to read. So these, these words help clue us into what we're reading. And so when, when the word, this passage starts with the word if, um, I know that uh, this is important. And it's usually, um, the if starts with, okay, if we do this, then, usually it's an if and then. Um, and we don't have a then in this one, but it's, it's implied. And so see if you can sort of see with that. And so let's read the scripture and then we'll get, we'll get talking about it. Okay, it says here, if you invoke as father, the one who judges all the people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have been purified, your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, a perishable, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. So let's take a look at it. Very short, um, but it's like, whew, there's a lot of stuff in here. So let's take a look at it. So here, starting about, you know, if we invoke as father, and so it, it's 
we do that. As Christians, we invoke God as our father. Um, and it says, okay, you know, what should we do that? We're invoking God's name as Christians, so then what should happen? Um, it doesn't, again, doesn't have the word then in there, but the, uh, it talks about the one who judges impartially, and we, we believe that God does. It really, you know, then live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. Live in reverent fear. And, and, and you know, that might rub you a little wrong there, um, but the reverent fear, that fear is not a scary fear. It's not like, hoo, 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 but it's a reverent awe. It's a wonder. Um, you know, we, we need to be aware of that when we're praying to, to, to God, that he is the creator. She is the creator of all the earth. And this, this, thought, this God is, is the judge of all, the creator of all. We, we have our existence through God, righteous above all righteousness. So yes, there, the, God wants us to love him. There's no question about that. But also we need to come with reverent you know, fear, reverent awe of his wonderful, wondrous deeds. Um, one of the things that uh, I read in Habakkuk, it's an Old Testament prophet, you know, and, and it's in chapter three, verse one. And it says, you know, I heard of your fame, Lord. I stand in awe of your wondrous deeds. And, and I, I just sort of like that. It's like, we have heard of his fame. We have heard, we, we know what, what, what God has done. And so we need to stand in awe of his wonderful deeds, even just like a day like this, or if it's a crummy weather day, it's still an awesome day. We're still upright. We're still breathing. We should be in awe of that. Um, and then it talks about, you know, the, uh, we need to change our ways because of this, because of this reverent fear and because what God has done for us. And the key thing is, is that when we look at this, it's, 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 it's a tremendous cost. It's, it's, it's not a cost. I mean, we think of gold and silver as like, wow, these are precious elements that are worth a lot. But they, they also eventually just go away. You know, they, we don't, we, you know, they, we don't, you know, bring them to heaven with us. You know, they're any kind of riches there. They, you know, in the old Testament, they, they talk about rotting, you know, and about they, they just will disappear. They come and go. And I mean, gosh, we just have to see that with the stock market today and how, you know, at, I know it is, it's climbing up a little bit, but boy, at one time it was very low. Those are just like imperishable. That wealth that we thought that we did have and now we, we don't have, uh, is, is, this comes and goes. But the thing is, is that God's sacrifice through his son, Jesus Christ, never comes and goes. It is always here. It is the, the tremendous cost. You thought gold and silver were pricey. This tremendous cost of Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross was was beyond you know what we can imagine and it was not just for the people of that day it's not just for the people of the, the the times before but it's for us now god shed his through his son jesus christ died on the cross shed paid the penalty for our sin by his blood the perfect sacrifice and when they talk about lamb that goes back to the jewish time of passover they they will remember that but that, that blood, that cost, that Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God on the cross, that was because of us. That was because of me, and that was because of you. Please, you know, make sure you understand that. That wasn't because of just the people back then. That was because of me, and that was because of you. Um, and then it talks about, you know, how, uh, um, how this, was, this was planned you know, from the foundation of the world. This was destined for the foundation of the world. God had this as part of the plan. And boy, I don't understand that at all. Um, you know, the mystery of that all is, is for me, is, is something to be, to not quite understand yet. But the only thing I, I get from that is that, you know, if, if this was done before, you know, things started, before we were on the earth, God didn't need our help to do this. You know, we didn't give God advice to say, hey, we need a plan here because we're sinful people and we better have your son die on the cross. It had nothing to do with us. 
no human help if this was the, the if this happened at the beginning of the world and which it, it says it does and then it comes like okay here we go and then this is what i take really for for our times and the, the last part of this verse 21 and 22 for our times of today and so it's through him you have come to trust in god and it's like, oh my goodness, all this craziness, all this uncertainty in this world. Um, where's our trust? Where is our trust? And you know, I, I'm not going to knock any leader, but I, I, I can't. You know, I, I, I would not want to be the president. I would not want to be a governor. I would not want to be a mayor. I'm finding being a pastor during this time is hard enough. Okay, and so it is so confusing. So again, do you put your trust in like my wisdom? Do I put my trust in the leader's wisdom? Yeah, I, I need to pay attention to that and, and, and be obedient, you know, to the guidelines that are set before me, like, you know, staying at home and in obedience and being careful and washing my hands and, and things like that. But the ultimate trust is in God. I mean, all you have to do is listen to the news and you'll understand that they don't know much about this virus. You know, all this stuff is so confusing. And now you have to make uh, policies on this. It's like, no, we're going to put our trust in God. And so, you know, despite all that, we're putting it, you know, our trust. And if you go all the way to the end of it, this trust is, is through his word, this living word, this enduring word, this word that, you know, this was written, you know, over 2,000 years ago, and it applies to us today. It applies to us today just as much as it did 2,000 years ago when Peter is, 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 is writing this, this, this letter, this enduring word. That's what we're going to put a trust, our trust in. And now it talks about that you have been purified, your, you know, your souls by your obedience to the truth. And so, you know, we're set apart because of, you know, of, of our obedience. Um, and it's, you know, and it's our genuine mutual love. I want to go to this 23, if you've been born anew. And to me, that just reminds me of our Easter season. You know, how we are, how we are born anew, that we have the living, risen Christ inside of us. And I'm just thinking that that has to make a difference. In normal times, you've heard me say that, that has to make a difference. And in these questionable times, these crazy times, it has to make even more of a distance. And it says there, and here it comes, and this is, to me, is this, you know, this is, you know, the heart of the message. So you need to have genuine mutual love. You need to love one another deeply from the heart. Wow. And it says, love one another. I'm looking at that term, one another, and that just doesn't mean the people who are in our family. Maybe the people who worship us, maybe the people who look like us, that talk like us. It means everybody. I wonder how this world would change. I wonder how it, what we would look or how, we, how, we would, how it would be different if we looked upon others with this tremendous love. This, this one another is an in, ex, inclusive term. It's not exclusive. It's not just say, this is just my group that I'm going to love here. It says to love one another. And to me, that means everybody, everyone. And so our thoughts and our minds to the, all the people that we meet today and all the things that we see out in the world and all these things that are happening with borders and stuff like that, we need to love one another. Because it says so here in, in, in 1 Peter, because this, you know that that's God's message. God loved us, that he sent his only son for us. He, talking about inclusive, that's, that's everybody. He just doesn't say, oh, this, this is part, this is all I'm gonna send my, love, you know, my son for. It's for everybody. And so we should do that. It says, love one another from the heart, deeply from the heart, not the superficial, but deeply from the heart. And, and if we look at people as God, you know, being created in God's image, being created as children of God, I think that becomes a little bit easier. Not, not, not easy, though. I know I, I wouldn't, 
you know, I'm thinking if God put me as this impartial judge, put me in front and he said, okay, you're accused of, you know, loving everyone. How do you plead? And I know what I would have to say. I would say, well, no, I don't love everyone deeply from the heart. And so I pray uh, for myself and for you that we will ask for God's love so we can give it to others. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.